And we're back as we try to uncover the mystery of who killed Ibuki and Hyoko. People mentioned that that possibly their killing was meant to to imitate Hello this there. movie. I knew you'd come here. That means you noticed it too, right? The case this time is an imitation case in which the killer used that movie as their theme. I wouldn't know. I haven't watched that movie yet. I see. Then you really should watch this movie first. Hey! Customers here. Did you call me? Wah -wah? Huh? Hachime's the customer. You have a problem with that? What are you gonna do? And you said you didn't want to watch it, but I knew you wanted to see it all along. If that's what Sundari Hajime looks like, then you're really a tough guy. <laughs> you're so devoted to being Sundari, you even bought the Monokuma sticker for one and a half million dollars. Huh? You paid one and a half million dollars for a sticker? It's nothing. Listen up! In exchange for not watching this movie, Hajime paid 1.5 million dollars for a Monokuma sticker. Come on, since we're talking about it anyway, why don't you show it to Nagito? Stop it. But my resistance was in vain. Monokuma reached into my pocket and took out the sticker. Ta-da! See? It's this one! <laughs> Oops. <laughs> that is just too funny. That's... You bought this for 1.5 million dollars? <laughs> but in the end, he's still gonna watch the movie. Who cares about that anymore? Just hurry up and give me an invitation ticket. Okay, here you go! It already says so on the invitation ticket, but it's only if, it only says it already says so on the invitation ticket, but it's only effective today at this time. By the way, I I can only give away one ticket per person. You only have one chance to watch it for free. I've already stamped today's date on the ticket, so you won't be able to cheat. Don't worry, I only plan to watch it once. Look forward to it, okay? Then I'll go prepare the projection reel. Please wait a bit, okay? Hey. Ah, Hajime. About that invitation ticket. I strongly recommend you keep that safe. Huh? Why? No reason. Just think of it as a protective charm. Oh. Okay. Guess I should just wait until Monokuma finishes his preparations. Yeah, I noticed that the uh, the bag is gone. That reminds me, that item should be on top of the counter. Yep. Looks like a tote bag made of hemp cloth with a decal of Monami's face on it. Catch your eyes right, an all-purpose tote bag, useful for a variety of common tasks. It's a limited item, only one person can have it. But the tote bag is gone, that means... What's this? Whoa there, are you interested in, in buying that tote bag? Too bad! Well, that's too bad. It's already sold out. Who'd you sell it to? You're so stupid. stupid! There's no way I'd fall for that! There's no way I'd say something to reveal who the killer is! <laughs> so the killer bought it. Shocking. Ah! I remember you said there was only one because it's a limited item, right? Hmm. Um, it's not limited to one. It's more like it's limited to one person. What's the difference? Hey! When you buy one bag, you get another free. It's a common practice to bait customers with bonus prizes. For some reason, hearing you say that pisses me off. So there was a second bag. Well, now. I should forget that I carelessly made a slip of the tongue. Now then. Looks like the preparations are complete, so please enter the theater right away. I can't wait! I can't wait! Okay. Uh, wish me luck, Nagito. Oh, that sounds lovely. Um... I apologize for keeping you waiting. World-famous director Monokuma presents a stunning masterpiece that reduced American audiences to tears. The Wizard of Monami 2.5D will be screened shortly. In the title alone, I have a bad feeling about this. Two and a half D? That sounds so half-assed. Now, Ben, please relax and enjoy the film! I doubt it. 
Can we get the uh, Mystery Science Theater Monokuma guys in the, was born in a down remote the corner village there? Full of old people because the death rates outpace the birth rates. One day, Monokuma was swept up by a tornado created by a helicopter gunship during a routine military exercise. What? That is not a thing. And was whisked away to Monami's country. Monokuma wanted to return to his homeland so he could go back to pestering the old people for change. So he began his journey to see the wizard, Monami, who was rumored to grant any wish one desires. Along the way, he met a very loyal group of friends. Monokuma met a Monami scarecrow who was missing a brain. When he recommended that she commit suicide, the Monami scarecrow hanged herself and died. He also met a Monami lion who was missing her courage, so he pumped her full of arrows. <sighs> he also met a Monami tin man who was missing a heart, so Monokuma sliced her into lumps of iron. After a lot of other stuff happened, Monokuma finally reached the wizard Monami, the great and powerful. Eventually, one thing led to another, and he started beating the crap out of Monami. And in the end, he somehow usurped the kingdom from her. <laughs> With this, Monokuma enslaved the old people, took their pensions, and lived the rest of his days in luxury. And he lived happily ever after. The end. Wow. Something tells me this isn't getting an Oscar. Man, movies are the best. That drama was so moving that I needed two boxes of tissues. One for each head. So... Now then, let's meet again at the class trial. Bye-bye! I'm too disgusted to even let out a sigh right now. That's all I can say to describe this situation. How was it? Actually, I don't even have to ask. I totally expected your reaction. That was honestly the worst movie I've ever seen. Is it even okay to call that a movie? But thanks to that movie, now you know, right? Yeah. Just like he said, the characters who were killed in the movie match the victims in this case. Ibuki's death by hanging matched the Scarecrow's death in the movie. Not just that, but Hyoko's suspended body matches the lion's death, too. But... It would have been a complete imitation if the killer killed three people, but it seems that wasn't possible. Perhaps the killer's upset about that right now, or... The killer's main goal was just an imitation murder. They should be upset about it, but... I'm not sure if that's even true. Hmm. Yeah, there is an inconsistency, at least when it comes to, uh, to, uh, Hyoko's death. Hey. After watching the movie, you get it now, right? The case is Times an Imitation Murder? Well, okay, we're just gonna, we're just repeating this. Okay, we were also gonna check out the motel. Namely, Hyoko's room. I just 
just remembered, I never went inside any of the rooms in the motel. Plus, I don't even know where Hyoko's room is. Might be faster to just ask someone. So you have a peer. You're here, right? Come on out. Huh? Are you talking to me? I can see you. Did you really think you could hide your presence like that? I wasn't trying to hide in the first place. Hey, uh, which room was Hyoko staying in? Listen well! Open the door to the center room. <laughs> However, are you prepared? Make sure you pray to whatever god you hold dear, and you might want to bring an extra pair of underwear. <laughs> I wonder, how does this guy talk to his parents and teachers? <laughs> Looks like it's locked, but the key was inside her kimono. Maybe if I use this. It opened, just as I thought. This key was Hyoko's room key. Alright, I should go inside. So, Hyoko was staying here. Doesn't look too bad. She only stayed here a few nights, so it doesn't really feel like her room, but... I feel a little conflicted. Oh, I saw Oh my! Huh, did the door open? Yeah, Hyoko put the key in her kimono, so I used that to open it. So how did you get in here? Um, I see. What, did something happen? No, it is just... I'm starting to believe it might be my fault. Her fault? What you mean? The moment Kyoko came to this motel, she completely shut herself in this room. She was afraid of the despair disease, so she she was afraid of the despair disease, so so she was cautious of you guys too, right? However, her fear of the disease was not the only reason she locked herself in her room. She had another reason. Besides the disease, what other reason would make her lock herself in her room? Perhaps her kimono. Her kimono. Um. Yesterday, I went to go talk to her. Since she had been in her room for some time, I told her it might be good for her to go outside for a bit. She kept the door to her room locked, but by coincidence, it was not locked at that time. And then I saw it. Um, oh yeah, she has trouble uh, putting it on by herself. Hyoko was crying and struggling with her kimono sash. She didn't want to smell bad, so she took a shower, but... Then she could not tie her sash anymore. Mahiru is no longer with us, so I believe she was having trouble with it. She didn't leave her room because she couldn't tie her kimono, huh? You are right. The others might have thought it was just a silly sash, but it must have been a serious issue for her. Um... Hyoko told me that she learned how to tie her sash from Mahiru. That Mahiru kindly taught her the basics. That's why she wanted to be able to tie her sash on her own. Perhaps. She probably could not forgive herself for not being able to do it, especially since Mahiru taught her. I... I could not really understand her feelings, which is why I said what I did. What did you say? Hyoko, by chance, are you having trouble wearing your kimono? Stupid! What are you saying? Of course I can do it! Because Mahiru taught me. That's why I can do it on my own. Uh, um, if that is the case, how about you do it someplace where there is a mirror? Oh, I have to Do you I'm remember already... the full length mirror in the storage room at the music venue? Mm -hmm. If you do it while standing in front of a large mirror, I am confident you will be successful. Also, shutting yourself in your room like this may be bad for your health. Um... And that was when she kicked me out. It cannot be! Could it be Hyoko remembered that? Are you saying she went to the music venue to wear her kimono? And I can see that happening. Hyoko locked her room and made sure she put the room key inside her kimono. I can't imagine that she was abducted by someone. If so, that's weird. Hey, did you tell anyone about that before the incident? Or was someone listening in on your conversation? Um... I never told this to anyone, 
and I do not believe anyone was listening in on our conversation. Nobody knew. If that's the case, how did the killer know Hyoko was going to the music venue? Something's wrong. Maybe they didn't intend to kill Hyoko, but she might have walked in on something and they had to kill her in order to keep her silent. There's a mirror, but it's so small and rusty. There's no way anyone can use this. I don't see anything else that looks suspicious. There's no sign someone made a mess of her room, and I don't think she was forcefully abducted. I don't feel like I can find any important clue. Oh well. But I do see a Monokuma there. No! Anything else worth checking out? That isn't messed up. It doesn't look like she was abducted in her sleep. No, I'm sure she went to the, uh... I'm sure that she did go to the music venue on her own. Damn right! Hey, Hajime, can you explain to me again? What happened when you first discovered Ibuki's body? It was the same as when I found it with you guys. Goofy's body was hanging from the baton lighting. However, there was no body discovery announcement made. That's why I went to get you guys. I met up with Chiaki at this motel, and when we were about to go back to the music venue, you meet up. You met up with me, kind of me. And we went back to the music venue. The entrance door wouldn't open for some reason. I see. So we had no choice but to break down the door, and discovered Kyoko's body was suddenly there too. Yeah, that's what happened. Hey! This is the most important part. When you arrived at the motel, who else saw you besides Chiaki? Um, as I recall... Didn't you hear me? A body was found. A body? Yeah! Could it be? You intend to spread lies like Nagito in order to confuse us all. Besides Chiaki, I also saw Gundam and Monomi. I see. So, Kazuichi and Sonia didn't appear, huh? Do you think those two are suspicious? Like... Well, Hyoko was killed. Between the time you saw Ibuki's body and when we broke down the door, right? So obviously those two are the most suspicious since they weren't with us. That might be it, but... I... While we were at it, let me tell you my alibi, too. When the morning Monokuma announcement woke me up, I went straight to the hospital. I saw Mikan panicking in front of the hospital. I asked her what was going on, she said Ibuki disappeared. So you guys split up and looked for Ibuki, huh? Well, yeah. While we were circling the island, we came to the motel and saw you guys there. Did you see anyone else while you circled the island? Well... No, we went to the movie theater and that street full of machines to look for Ibuki, but we didn't see anyone. Are you implying I don't have an alibi because I didn't run into anyone? It's unreasonable for you to doubt me. The time that Mikan and I were on our own looking for Ibuki wasn't very long. In that short time, there's no way I could have killed Kyoko and wrapped her around the pillar with duct tape. It's true, I feel like there wasn't enough time to do that after I left the music venue. But the fact is Kyoko was killed and we did discover her body. Do you still doubt me? Jeez. Well, I'm used to it. It's true I've done things that I deserve to be doubted for. Huh. So don't worry. Even if you doubt me, I don't plan on dismembering you and casing you in concrete. I'd want to know in advance what I'd have to do to end up like that. Here we go. Everybody doing? It's me, Monokuma! Yay! Awesome! The class yes, trial's awesome. gonna start, you know. So make sure you guys come to Monokuma Rock ASAP. <laughs> I'll see you soon. It's already time. 
So, this again. I need to go to that place again. But now is not the time to be a coward. The reason Ibuki and Hyoko became victims, in order to find the truth, the only thing I can do is go. Um, okay, we're already here. I've encountered a few clues, I don't know everything yet, and I have no idea who could have done it, either. Although, they did say Kazuichi and Sonya don't have alibis. At least for the time that... At least for the time between the, um, the two bodies were discovered. Welcome! Is everybody here? You guys want to go to the class trial? Sure, hold him right there. Monami's such what? a dumb child. Don't get in my way. You're just a dumb little sister who's short a few brain cells. Hey! My brain works just fine. Hey, hey! Monokuma, what did you do with Nekomaru? Uh, I see. So you've come to avenge him. Yes! Avenge? That sounds like he died. <laughs> sounds like you say? Oops. Anyway... Since Nekomaru is unfortunately unavailable today, let's just say he's absent. Bye bye Now then, I gotta go first. I won't let you. Hold on, I won't let you escape. Hey, hey! Did you hear what he said? Huh? Don't worry about it, there's no way Nekomaru is dead. He's just trying to piss us off. D damn it! Of course he's not dead. There's no way. Not in a million years. Well... More importantly, it's best if we worry about ourselves for now. If something happens here, every one of us except Nekomaru will die. <laughs> Why are you so excited about that? How about it? Who knows? Maybe I'm just looking forward to seeing poetic justice prevail. What do you care? What are you saying, Fiend? <laughs> You'll find out soon enough. See? Then, let's go. I'm gonna do it! Alright, let's hurry up and get this over with. Yeah, you're right. stepped onto the escalator and ascended toward the gaping maw of Monokuma Rock. And that's when I suddenly noticed it. I noticed our lined up silhouettes keep getting smaller and smaller. But I can't turn back now. If I turn back, I won't be able to press forward. And when everyone's inside Monokuma Rock, The elevator began its deep descent as usual. But nobody said a word. As we stood there trying to figure out what to say to each other, the elevator descended deeper and deeper. And when it descended as far as it could go, it finally stopped. The elevator doors opened slowly, almost tantalizingly so. Light poured through from the other side, eroding the boundaries of the darkness. And I walked into that place. My, my, it feels pretty toothless with all these empty seats. Well, two people got killed at the same time, and Nekomaru's not here either. Hey, hey! Is Nekomaru really not participating? If he's alive, you should invite him. No, no! Why bother? That's... What? now. Let's begin! It's the beginning of the long-awaited class trial. Please enjoy it to your heart's content! So, 
so the curtain to the third class trial was about to open. Ibuki Miyota, the ultimate musician. She was really loud, but she was the mood maker of our group. When I was with her, all my pain and suffering just seemed to melt away. Kyoko Sayanji, the ultimate traditional dancer. Just from looking at her adorable face, you never know she's actually selfish and foul-mouthed. But she was trying to change herself, and she was desperately trying to come to terms with Mahiru's death. The person who killed those two is among us. I definitely can't believe it. But whether I believe it or not is irrelevant. Unless I figure out the truth, I won't be able to escape from this hell. That's why I must find out, no matter the cost. For our sake. For our friend's sake. For Ibuki and Hyoko's sake. And so the curtain of the third class trial was about to open. This life-threatening trial billowing with hope and despair has begun. As usual, check our clues. There are two victims this time, Ibuki Miyota and Hyoko Sayon. Ibuki Miyota's cause of death was crushed windpipe as a result of choking. There are no other external injuries. Hyoko's cause of death was blood loss due to her throat being slit by a sharp-edged tool. It appears her death was instant. There were blood stains on the soles of Ibuki's feet. The rope used for hanging. According to Mikan, there is no doubt that the cause of Ibuki's death was her hanging herself with this rope. The key to the motel room that Kyoko was staying in. It was buried deep inside her kimono, so it was pretty difficult to retrieve. A thick scrap of paper that was stuck to the baton lighting black curtain at the very back of the music venue stage. It's not wide enough to reach the size of the stage. It looks like it was brought from the supermarket, and not something that was originally here. A stepladder was found on the music venue stage, tipped on its side. On its left side, a slight blood stain can be seen. A candle was found at the front of the music venue stage. It looks like the dim light seen in the surveillance camera video is actually light from this candle. Surveillance camera unit put inside the music venue for communication purposes. It's been smashed into pieces and no longer works. The AC was cranked up to 86 degrees. It was extremely hot because of the, inside the music venue because of that. Evidence that a blood stain was wiped off the floor of the music venue stage. Since Ibuki had no open wounds, it's believed the blood belonged to Hyoko. A strange glob that was stuck to where both music venue doors touch each other. Right up until the Monokuma announcement that morning, Mikan was with Hajime the whole time. Afterwards, she went to the hospital to check on everyone, and realized that Ibuki had disappeared. When she rushed out of the hospital to search for Ibuki, she apparently met up with Fuyuhiko. The video that Hajime saw at the hospital it shows a person dressed in a hospital gown wearing a hemp bag on their head as they willingly climb a stepladder toward a noose. After Fuyuhiko met Mikan in front of the hospital, they split up to search for Ibuki. They checked the movie theater and Electric Avenue, but they didn't find anyone. Apparently Fuyuhiko and Mikan were only separated for a short time. Yoko was distraught because her kimono was disheveled, and she was unable to tie it on her own. That's when Sonya apparently told her about the full-length mirror in the music venue storage room. The invitation ticket prepared by Monokuma. One ticket was passed out per person, and the date it was passed out was printed on the ticket. A Monami tote bag that was sold at the movie theater. It's a limited item because only one person can buy it. Apparently, you get another bag for free when you purchase it. The movie that Monokuma directed. There were a total of three deaths in the movie. First, Monami Scarecrow died by hanging herself. 
next line was pumped full of arrows. Finally, Tin Man died by getting chopped into metal pieces. Okay, that's all of them. Let's hope more clues present themselves during the trial. Now then, let's begin with a simple explanation of the class trial. During the class trial, you will present your arguments for who the killer is and vote for who done it. If you vote correctly, then only the blackened will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong person, I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and that person will earn the right to leave this island. Oh well, who cares about this boring explanation? Let's get on with it already! Okay. I don't mind starting the trial, but I don't really have a grasp of how the case played out. You know, because I was asleep the whole time. <laughs> Even if you do grasp it, you're just gonna confuse the heck out of us, aren't you? But Nagito's not alone. I don't really get it either. You're fine. Your head's empty anyway. <laughs> Jeez, Kazi, you don't have to be so blunt. Empty head? Huh. What's wrong with that? Listen up! The emptier your head, the more dreams you can stuff inside it, you know? Anyway, <laughs> we shouldn't proceed with the trial if those two can't participate in the arguments. Since he's the first witness, why don't we ask Hajime to explain the incident and the sequence of events? Then? Let's start with when we split into the hospital team and motel team because of the despair disease. The okay. hospital team consisted of Nagito, Ibuki, and Akane, who were infected, and Mikan, Fuyuhiko, and me. The other five on the motel team were myself, Gundam, Kazuichi, Tiaki, and Kyoko. Spending the night at the hospital was prohibited, so Hajime and I had to sleep at our cottages. I woke up at my cottage on the day the incident happened. Mikan came by to wake me up, and told me that Nagito had recovered from his symptoms. We immediately headed over to the hospital, and after we confirmed his recovery, I made Mikan rest in the on-call room, since she hadn't slept all night, while I waited in the hospital lobby. And then, I saw the incoming signal light on the surveillance camera blinking before our scheduled time. When I pressed the button to turn on the monitor, what appeared on screen was... A video of someone wearing a hospital gown and a hemp bag on their head, climbing a stepladder. Amazing! That's such a hard-pounding story! And then what did you do, Hajime? I, I tried to stop them, of course. I rushed out of the hospital and ran to where the video was being recorded, the music venue. But it was too late. By the time I arrived, the person wearing the hemp bag on their head was already hanging from the ceiling. I thought I should tell the others right away, so I headed to the motel. Why the motel? Because it was close to the music venue, and unlike the hospital, there were more able-bodied people there. At least, that's what I thought. The only person who came with me was Chiaki. But I remember feeling a little relieved because not long after, we met up with Mikan and Fuyuhiko. We were also looking for Ibuki since she disappeared from our sight. After I rested for a bit, I started counting everyone at the hospital. And then, I noticed Ibuki was gone. So, I, I sprinted out of the hospital. Coincidentally, I ran into Fuyuhiko. So I fled with him, in various ways, to see if he could help me out. Various ways? Don't get any... Don't get any raunchy ideas. Don't say it like that and confuse people. <laughs> After I heard from those two that Ibuki disappeared, I had a feeling she was the person wearing the hemp bag. So I immediately led them to the music thing. But the door wouldn't open. Since we had no other option, the four of us broke down the door. And when that happened... We didn't just find Ibuki's body. We also found Hiyoko's. And not just that. Her body was taped to a pillar. 
that's when we heard the body discovery announcement. Not once, but twice in a row. And so, we decided to lower the hanged body, didn't we? When we removed the hemp bag, just as we feared, it was Ibuki. So that's how the case played out. Thank you. I understood it very easily. You're welcome. Well, it's clear what the problem with this case is. When Hajime left the music venue, who... Wait, how do I know anything Hajime just said is true? Oh. Huh? Sorry, I'm only being impartial right now. The story I just heard is clearly suspicious. Hajime, if you're the only one who saw the hanging video, and the first one to discover Ibuki's body, then you can be lying as much as you want right now, right? Lie? Why would I lie? Obviously. So you can make us ignore what might be an inconvenient truth for you. You're gonna try to pin it on me. Do you doubt me? If you're not lying, I would like you to prove it. Oh boy. Come on, try to prove it to me. Prove you're not the killer. Yeah. It's just as Kazuichi said, Nagato's the kind of guy who will just confuse us and make matters worse. Damn it, I shouldn't ex have explained it to Nagato. I'm in trouble now thanks to that. Hajime's testimony is clearly suspicious. If Hajime's testimony is a lie, then the fact that Ibuki hung herself... That would also be a lie. I don't think I can deny that possibility. Well. After all, Hajime is the only witness. Why would Hajime lie? Well, obviously, because he's the killer. Did Hajime kill both of them? The fact that the bodies were imitating the movie oh. means it probably is Hajime's fault. No. You know you're lying. You know you're lying. I'm not the killer. There should be a contradiction somewhere. Yeah. Hajime's testimony is clearly suspicious. You know I didn't watch the movie until until now. That would also. I don't think I can. After all, Hajime is the only. Why would Hajime lie? Well, obviously, because he's the killer. Did Hajime kill both of them? The fact that the bodies were imitating the movie. No, that's wrong! I'm not the killer! I mean, there's no way I'd be able to imitate that movie. Of course you're not. I already knew that. Huh? So he's dicking with us again. God Before damn, incident, Nagito. Hajime had never watched that movie. His invitation ticket is proof of that. Ugh. Each person only received one ticket, and they're marked with a stamp that shows the date and time. Is he dicking with us, or is he trying to... Is he trying to just verify that I'm not suspect in his own twisted little way? Isn't that right, Monokuma? Yes! No mistakes there! Which means there's no way Hajime, who never saw the movie, could commit murders that imitated it. Or, did anyone tell him what happens in the movie? Of course no one did, right? Hold on a sec! You're the one who brought this up in the first place! Nagito, what are you doing? Well, since we're opening with your witness testimony, I thought we should solidify the foundation. It also provides a good warm-up. What warm-up? This isn't a game, you know. <laughs> Don't get mad. I just think warming up is really important. Especially since this isn't a game. What a waste of time. Well, I knew it would turn out like this anyway. Now then, since we know Hajime's testimony is reliable, let us move on to the arguments. So this means Ibuki definitely climbed the stepladder all by herself, right? Yeah, I'm positive. Hmm. Then that seals it! Ibuki committed suicide! 
if Ibuki committed suicide, then who killed Hiyoko? Hmm. A murder coincidentally occurring in the same place as a suicide... ain't possible, huh? Like I said before, it's pretty clear what the problem with this case is. The killer murdered Hiyoko while Hajime was gone. So all we gotta do is establish who could have possibly done that. Then let's ask Hajime. How long would you say you were away from the music venue? I couldn't have been gone for more than 10 minutes. So they killed Hiyoko and taped her up within 10 minutes? There's no way that's possible. That's why the killer stalled for time by making the music venue a closed room. Hmm? What do you mean a closed room? The killer blocked the venue door from the inside to try and keep us from entering right away. However, that door is the only entrance to the music venue, right? If they blocked the door from the inside, the killer would not have been able to leave either. That's a good point. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Unless they hid somewhere and pretended to to join us. Which after. means, when we broke down the venue door, the killer was still inside. Right. <laughs> they were? If that's the case, the only suspicious people are those who don't have an alibi for that time. And that's you two! Sonia and Kazuichi! Oh. <laughs> Me too? What the hell? Why's it gonna be us? The others all have alibis. Chiaki, Mikan, Hajime, and I all broke down the venue door together. Gundam met up with Hajime at the motel right before that. And if Akane and Nagito were laid up in the hospital, the only person that leaves is one of you. There's another person who doesn't have an alibi. You know, Nekomaru. How could he have... Nito! <laughs> what was that? Hey, why are you talking like... Oh, he was. Oh, he was You're imitating uh, Nekomaru's voice. Weird, are you? Please stop making bad jokes. Anyway, if the killer was hiding inside the venue, we should obviously doubt the people who don't have alibis. Well, we should probably clear them up at way least. Of backing us into a wall. Is this his professional skill? <laughs> the killer was inside the music venue. Fuyuhiko obviously thinks so, but. Is that really it? Hmm. How else? How else could they have... How else could they have... have done what they did? The killer was still inside the music venue. By locking the door from the inside, they tried to keep us from getting in. It seems they were trying to stall for time. How did they lock the door? That door should not have had a lock. The lock was on the floor in front of the door. Are you talking about the broken drumstick? You can use that as a bolt to lock the door. By doing that, the killer who was hiding inside waited till we gathered together and suddenly appeared. So they look like they had just rushed over. I have seen this in serial crime dramas. Hmm. I didn't see a lot of... That person's remark contradicts the truth. By locking the door from the inside, they tried to keep us from getting in. It seems they were trying to stall for time. How did they lock the door? But... Who's... The door should not have had a lock. The lock was on the floor in front of the door. Are you talking about the broken drumstick? You can use that as a bolt to lock the door. 
By doing that, the killer who was hiding inside waited till we gathered together and suddenly appeared. So they look like they had just rushed over. I have seen this in serial crime dramas. That person's remark. The killer was still inside the music venue. Wait, have any By locking the door from the inside. They tried to keep us from getting in. It Did seems they... they were trying to stall for time. Okay, with this... Was there something about this? Hmm. Maybe with, with whatever that glue-like stuff was, they were able to... They were able to lock it from the outside. I'm gonna try it. How did they lock the door? That door should not have- The lock was on the floor. Are you talking about the broken? You can use that as a- By doing that, we can- Wait until we get- And suddenly it- So they look like- I have seen this in serial crime dramas. The killer was still inside the music venue by locking the door from the inside. Yes! No, that's wrong! There's also a possibility that the door was locked from the outside. From the outside? How? It has a semi-transparent glob stuck to the venue door. Maybe that's what they used. Semi-transparent glob? Like, rubber, maybe? It wasn't rubber at all. That semi-transparent glob, glob was probably... glue. I see! Semi-transparent glob must have been glue. Glue? Yeah, I think so too. It had a firm, gel-like chewiness, and I could smell workshop chemicals the moment I put it in my mouth. Still don't know why you had to taste it. Based on all that, I'm certain it was glue. I didn't know glue was edible! I believe it is not something one typically eats. <laughs> That glue was only applied to the areas where both doors touched. By pouring it in the gaps of the closed door, it must have sealed the venue door from the outside. And thanks to that, a glob of glue was left where the door was stuck. Yep, it fits perfectly. But if you just stick them together with glue, you'd be able to break down the door easily, you know? That doesn't really matter. The killer only did that to make us think the door was locked from the inside. What'd you say? First of all, didn't that drumstick we found seem really obvious? Almost mm. unnaturally so? As I suspected, maybe the broken drumstick was planted to make us think that's what was used to, to bar the door. It was so obvious that it makes more sense to think the killer placed it as a diversion. Are you saying the drumstick was a trap the killer set on purpose? Then I... I totally fell for that fucking trap! Apologize to Miss Sonia! And me! However, you're not allowed to slice open your stomach this time! <laughs> In a quarrel, yeah, really. both sides are to blame! That's why it's better to just have no sides at all! So... Thank you During the 10 minutes Hajime left the venue, the killer murdered Hiyoko and created a closed space? And they also taped her up after killing her, right? Even quick work has limits. Oh, What unimaginable speed for a slowpoke like me. If they couldn't have done it while Hajime was away from the venue, they must have done it earlier than that. Earlier. But when Hajime yeah. got to the venue, only Ibuki's body was there, right? And when you went back with everyone else, Kyoko's body was there too, right? Right. But it's possible that the body was just revealed at that time, when Kyoko was actually killed earlier. That's what I was suspecting too. Just revealed? 
Of course, the body wasn't revealed on its own. The killer did that too. Here, I have proof. Hmm, that scrap of paper. Is that what we found in the baton lighting at the music venue? That's right, but just what is this scrap anyway? That torn piece of wallpaper. That scrap that was stuck on the baton lighting in the music venue. Now I should be able to figure out what it is. Oh boy, we gotta do this. I think I already know what it is though. how much that took off. You have to be keeping an eye on so much at once. Isn't it part of the wallpaper in the storage room? But I think I think we'll call it and continue this trial next time. See you guys later. I'm playing a game.